Module 5, Fabrication Tools, covers the following topics. Heat numbers, weld lists, weld counts, diameter inch and spool weight calculations, and class codes. The first topic in Module 5 is heat numbers. Part of the bill of material routine allocated a column for the heat number. We'll zoom up on the bill of material to take a look. You'll notice that there's a heat number column. It is left blank by default. At any time, we can go to our Fabrication Tools tab and adjust the heat number list. Selecting the heat number list tool brings up a dialog box that allows us then to input information for each of our components within the bill of material. Click OK and it updates our bill of material. Our next topic is weld lists. Before we actually place the weld list or the weld map within a drawing, we can set the settings in the Shop Settings Manager. For our project, we can customize settings for the weld gaps, the general settings, the look and feel of the information. From the weld list columns that will appear, adding and removing columns for the weld count, for our pipe ends, for our labor codes, everything can be set within the Shop Settings Manager. Let's look at inserting the weld list. Select the weld list tool. By default, the current drawing is selected. We can select one or more drawings to create a global weld list for a project. We'll just do the current drawing for this sample. We'll insert it into the drawing, but we can save it as a spreadsheet or text information similar to our bill of material. Welder information shows up, so if we know who will be doing all the welding on a particular spool, we can put that information in beforehand or we can update it later. Click OK. Insertion point. Pick the corner underneath our bill of material and we'll add our weld tags. Similar to our bill of material. and our weld information balloons are placed, as well as our weld table. At any time, we can update this information simply by going into our weld list and then inputting the information. And it will update the information. Our next topic is the weld counts. Similar to our weld list, we can also put in a weld count table. Select the Weld Count tool. Again, the default drawing is selected. One or more drawings can be selected for a global weld count. Line number filters, component size filters can be set. We can create spreadsheets, text files, or just insert the chart into the drawing. We'll place it right below our weld list. Let's zoom up on it. And we can see the number of welds, the size of the welds, and the type of welds. At any time, this table can be updated to reflect changes. Our next topic is diameter inch and spool weight calculations. Part of our border information, and we'll zoom up on the border to show you, is the diameter inch and the weight calculation for the spool. They show up as attributes within the drawing. Under our Fabrication Tools tab, select the Diameter Inch tool, and it will calculate and show a total diameter inch for the spool in this case 31 inches, and we'll update the border automatically. To do the spool weight, select the Calculate Spool Weight. The calculated approximate weight of the spool is shown, 142.9 pounds. Select OK, and the information is updated. The last topic in Module 5 is the cost codes. Let's take a look at how the cost codes can be incorporated in our fabrication. Under the Fabrication Tools tab, select the Cost Codes tool. A dialog box appears. The current drawing is selected by default, but we can select one or more drawings to be processed. In the Labor Code dialog box, each weld is represented on the side, as well as the pipes and miscellaneous components. 
let's look at one of the welds. So weld A tells me it's a standard weld, the material, the pipe size. It's a butt weld. And we can actually apply a labor code. Click on the lookup table to find all the available codes. These can be added to the software. Select the code. Set our labor count to 1. It could be 2 or more. 1 if it's just a one-time operation. 2 if it takes 2. For instance, finishing up the pipe ends, so there would be 2. And click Add. Now on our weld A, we have our butt weld, as well as 100% x-ray. That would be just for weld A. If we wanted to do all of our welds, we could do a batch add. Select all the welds. Click on our lookout, find our 100% x-ray. Add that to all the components and click OK. And now you'll see all the different welds now have that cost code. Where we have two, we can simply delete. We can save this file for further use by clicking Save. And it saves it as an LCC file, Labor Cost Code file. We'll leave it with the default title, and we can process that later. We can export it directly to a spreadsheet. We'll do that and take a look at it. So there is our spreadsheet, and there is our labor cost code. And a quick look at our spreadsheet and all the information for each of the welds in that drawing. The number of the count. To utilize the LCC code file, we can go into our Shop Settings Manager. Under the labor codes, we can affect the code groups and the code library. And we can process a labor code file. We can find that file, open it, and it allows us to edit that information. We can then export, otherwise we can just close it off. So this concludes the topics covered in Module 5. Please review Module 5 or select the next module.